Hello folks, welcome to the Heritage Boatworks podcast. This is episode number 16. Hi folks, welcome back and uh, I wanted to thank Maggie, my daughter, (laughs) for that fantastic introduction. I listened to it again. She sounds a little nervous, so I, we'll work on that some more, and we'll have her do it again sometime soon. Maybe get her uh, to loosen up a bit. So welcome back. It's fantastic to be back on the microphone. This is the Heritage Boatworks podcast. It is episode number 16. Heritage Boatworks is the first and only podcast of its kind, exploring, promoting, and preserving boat building in New England. Great to have you back. And uh, just to give you some updates on the website, our subscriptions are up again, another 12%, which is fantastic. Very excited. For those of you that are listening to the, for the first time, uh, welcome. For the veterans that are still listening, thank you so much. I really appreciate having you guys on board. If you're not a member and you're listening to this, uh, you should really become one. It, it's, there's no fees. I don't spam you. I just send you a monthly newsletter details what's going on in the podcast, what's going on at Heritage Boatworks, uh, updates on the boats I'm building, uh, all sorts of fun stuff. So that's all you get is that one email a month for now. And uh, like I say, no spam, no sharing of info. Sorry, just adjusting my seat there a little. So go to heritageboatworks.com forward slash email and the number three, email three. And that will bring you to a page. All you do is put in your email address and your name, and you are officially on board. So some updates on the boat building. I haven't been blogging much about boat building, but it doesn't mean I'm not busy. I've been very busy with the boats. It's just uh, you can't really blog a whole lot about sanding. I've just been sanding and sanding and sanding. I've been trying to get the kids down there. The kids, uh, I'm not going to say they've lost interest. They still do ask me about it all the time. The problem is, is they ask me around 8 o'clock at night, right when I'm putting them to bed. So I'm on to their little game. It it doesn't trick me. They're, They're just trying to buy themselves a little more time before they have to go to bed. So when one of them comes to me right off the school bus at 3 o'clock and says, Hey, can we go build a boat? then we will be back down there building boats. But in the meantime, I've been doing a lot of kind of the dusty, dirty work down there, just trying to get through that so the kids don't have to cough and wheeze through sanding dust. Uh, I have the cat boat uh, all tacked with epoxy. It's all, the hull has its shape committed, basically. Looks fantastic. I've been doing a lot of sanding, just rounding off the corners, getting those corners ready for some fiberglass tape. And then we'll be rolling the boat over, which will be exciting. It'll be fun to see what the inside looks like when it's not upside down and I'm not laying on the floor. So that'll be fun. And I'll definitely get some pictures of that and and write up on it. Uh, The kayak, I've been focusing a little more on the kayak. Uh, As I've mentioned, I I neglected the kayak. I, I have to admit, I... I was so focused on the cat boat. The cat boat was just kind of exciting that I kind of just threw the kayak together. And if any of you out there are boat builders, you know that, that doing that can be disastrous. Uh, luckily, I think I've, I've diverted any huge disasters. I did have to kind of cut some seams back open and, and close them up in the right shape again. The deck has a little bit of a funky shape to it, but I think it's just the way the plywood is bending. And with a little uh, persuasion and epoxy, I think I can get it to bend in the right shape. So we should be okay. Once everything comes together, we should be all right. Uh, as it stands right now, the the hull portion of the kayak, the bottom, is uh, has all the fillets done and glass tape. Um, I just need to put a sheet of glass right in the cockpit where Harry will be sitting and that'll be pretty much done as far as the the hull goes and then I'll be attaching the deck. So attaching the deck is going to be very tricky, trying to get it to bend just the right way. Um, But again, I'm confident. I'm confident. We need to stay positive on these things. So once we get that going, um, once I get the deck attached, I think I'll probably start bringing Harry back down there so we can start uh, 
kind of sanding down edges and corners and when and the boat will really start taking shape and hopefully that'll be really exciting for him so moving on uh to the interview the interview this month was a great one uh it was it was with amy ballantyne uh stevens uh anyway they are the owner of ballantyne's boat shop and uh, Doe Dish LLC and Stuart Knockabout LLC. So it's all, they're all kind of under the same umbrella, so to speak, of ownership, uh, but they are three separate companies. And, you know, with the David Foynes interview last month uh, and Fatty Knees, the whole Edie and Duff story was kind of appealing to me. So I wanted to kind of track down the rest of the Edie and Duff story. Um, and the, the Doe Dish and the Stuart Knockabout um, were both being built by Edie and Duff. Now, I, I'm, I'm hoping I'm not wrong here. And, and Amy, um, if you're listening to this, you can certainly correct me if I am. But the Doe Dish is a fiberglass uh, reproduction of the um, Hairshaft 12 and a half, which is just one of my favorite boats. It's such a, a beautiful little boat. Um, the, the dough dish, the fiberglass version of it is <clears throat> you really looking at the boat from a distance. You can't tell the difference between a, a wooden 12 and a half and a dough dish. Uh, and the Stuart Knockabout is an, uh, is also a hair shaft design. That's by L. Francis. Uh, the first and only new Stuart Knockabout was built in 1933 around that area. Around that time, I should say, it was built for a gentleman named Ben Stewart, which is why it's now a Stewart knockabout. But um, it was discovered much later by William Harding, who was already building the dough dish uh, for about 15 years and found this Stewart knockabout uh, on the hard and instantly fell in love with it. So he brought it back and, and reproduced that in fiberglass as well. Um, and Edie and Duff was contracted to build both of these boats. So uh, when Edie and Duff um, fell apart, so to speak, uh, Ballantine's Boat Shop kind of took over um, those two companies. Now, again, those are still separate companies, so it was a little confusing, but I think we worked through it. Um, and those two companies now reside at Ballantine. So they are separate companies, but they reside there. And the Dodish and the Stuart Knockabout are both built in that yard. And they are um, stunning boats. The, the 12 and a half is the 12 and a half. It's just, you see them everywhere. They're, they're just gorgeous. Uh, standard Hirschhoff design in a, in a nice small package. Uh, the Stuart Knockabout is a really interesting boat as well. It's... it's um, it's much bigger, obviously. It's a 28-footer, and it's uh, it's just gorgeous. To, to watch it sail is beautiful. There's a YouTube video uh, on the Ballantine Boat Shop webpage. I'll put a link to that YouTube video on the show page, so you can go check that out. And the show page is at heritageboatworks.com forward slash HBW016. So that is the story of Ballantine's Boat Shop, Dodish LLC, and Stuart Knockabout LLC. And, uh, and essentially, Amy's story is, uh, is what's up next in the podcast. And, and she's had kind of a great, your, your, your run-of-the-mill New England um, boat builder tale. Grew up on the shore, grew up around boats, and... And the boats she grew up around were, were Hirschhoffs, and <laughs> she really got a little spoiled um, uh, in the boats that she had as a child. So absolutely beautiful. And the yard, the cold storage building, uh, is, is a place that I will behold in my memory for quite some time because there are some legendary, beautiful boats in there. Um, and And... Ballantine's Boat Shop is doing great work with uh, with the fiberglass versions of these classics, uh, and as well as restoring the wooden boats. the The carpenters there are very talented, and uh, and they certainly have the resources to to do some beautiful work there. So, without further ado, I hope you enjoy our interview, 
take it away, Amy. All right, we are here in Katomet, Massachusetts, um, down in the Cape. I am here with Amy Ballantyne of Ballantyne's Boat Shop and Dodish and Stuart Knockabout, uh, three different companies that, that Amy's associated with and, and owns two of them and is associated with a third. Um, Amy Ballantyne Stevens, thank you so much. Welcome, uh, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. Um, so I wanted to go through, we just took a shop tour and, uh, and the grounds are beautiful and the boats here, um, the boats here are on a whole different level. <laughs> they, there's just so many gorgeous boats in storage and being built and, uh, and, and just, uh, for a quick little lesson, uh, little information here for my listeners, the Dodish is a fiberglass version of the hair shaft 12 and a half. Um, the Stuart Knockabout is also a, a hair shaft design, um, that is, what is the name of that design again? It's a Stuart um, Knockabout. It's a Stuart Knockabout, yeah. but it was a, only one was originally built, and it, so it was Design 53. Yep. And, and that's an L. Francis hair shaft. L. Francis, okay. So the sun. Okay, so those are the, uh, those are the three companies, and then Ballantine's um, is the other company. Uh, and, and it's a family affair. I've been introduced now to, to Amy's father and Amy's mother. Uh, and your dog. And a whole bunch of dogs. <laughs> so uh, it's quite the family affair upstairs. Um, so why don't we um, dive into your life a little, Amy? Um, and you can tell me, like, let's, let's say, where you started after high school. Um, where did you grow up? Where did you go to school? And how did you end up here? Uh, well, I grew up here. Mm -hmm. uh, my father owned Valentine's. Um, so that's what he did all through my youth and growing up. Um, then I went to Found Academy down the, down the way. Local girl, huh? Yes. Yeah. But then, um, then I branched out and I went to uh, college in Indiana. Got a little landlocked there. But I did my study abroad program on a 120-foot um, schooner for a Sea Education Association, which was pretty incredible. And nice. it gave me a little more of a taste for boating, even though I had grown up around it. Yeah. And then after that, I taught English at a boarding school for five years. Excellent. A boarding school around here? Uh, Chapel Hill Chauncey Hall up in Waltham. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yep, which was a wonderful time, um, although a lot of work. Um, and then it became clear that it would be pretty cool to come here and work with my dad as well. So I stopped doing that and came home, and I bought a boat so I could live here because it's Cape Cod, and especially on a teacher's salary you can't afford real estate so I bought a boat and lived on it for five years a lot of people would prefer a boat um, I did actually yeah, yeah. it was it was it's like a movable house it was an incredible yeah. incredible time great learning opportunity for me um, but it was also just a magical magical time yeah. and then I got well, well, married. sorry to interrupt but what, what was what was the boat that you bought I bought a uh, captain's gig off of an aircraft carrier that was converted to be a liveaboard cruiser. That's great. So it's a 40-foot trawler. Um, I opted for fiberglass, um, even though we are a wooden boat shop. Yeah. Um, it just made more sense. You'd be amazed how many women wooden boat uh, people own fiberglass boats. Yes. <laughs> yes, which is part of why we, we did Dodish and Stewart is... For those people who love those wooden boats but have a little more practicality, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. or less time, or less money. For the less time or money, yep. Um, so, that is essentially how I came here. And, um, so at that point... Um, it was just Valentine's. It was just Valentine's at that point. Yep. And you were living aboard. I was um, living aboard. Yep, your boat. Um, and eventually got married. Hi there. Excuse me, is Steve around? He's on the third floor, I oh. think. Okay. You have to keep going up. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Sorry, we did No worries. No, <laughs> it, it, it's uh, it's live. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a very active place here, and, yeah. and the, the listeners can see that now as well. It's um, 
a lot of dogs. The dog will start. I'm going to say that five or six times. A lot of dogs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of folks working in different areas, and uh, and it is. It's very very alive here, which is which is fantastic. Some of the boat places, the boat shops you go to, are just you interview someone, and the rest of the place is just kind of barren. Um, but it's uh, sometimes that would be nice. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you're living aboard the boat. Um, you gave up teaching, came back, and you you were it was just Valentine's. Now, did you do you work for your dad at that point and just yep. uh, kind of learn the ropes? Yep, and I um, worked out in the yard a fair amount. I did um, the varnish work with a paint department um, and did some you know helps with the rigging department where I could and and that sort of thing just so I could get sort of an idea of all aspects of what needed to be done. Mm -hmm. Um, I did our website, nice. which was a painful undertaking. <laughs> do you have to learn it from scratch? Really yes, much? I yeah. did. Yeah. What, so what year was that about? That was 06, 07. Mm. I'll tell you, uh, you probably don't do it anymore, but managing a website has gotten a lot easier since then. Um, I do still do it, do and I still hate it. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? I try. It's gotten, see, I, I got into kind of just very ground level, more for fun and a hobby, uh, doing web design back in like 98, maybe 2000, mm -hmm. and it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare, and it's, it is a lot easier now. Yeah, than at least I don't have to work, work at code and, yes, and all that yes. stuff. Yes, yes. You don't have to use notepads anymore. <laughs> but the, the whole like, why the hell is it only on the left side? Like, yeah. why? Yeah. Gets a little annoying. I, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, okay, so now we're at Valentine's Boat Shop, and you are uh, working with your dad, and um, how did Dodish and Stuart come about? Did they come about separately or together? Or They came about together. Um, Bill Harding, who owned Dodish, El Dodish Inc., and E&D Stewart, um, was retiring, um, and it coincided with E and Duff, who was his builder, um, going out of business. And so it was a logical time for us to sort of take the torch and take over building these two designs that we had been maintaining for as long as they had been in existence. Mm -hmm. And um, so we were already equipped to sort of absorb um, those boats and we knew them better than anybody else. And, right. um, and so we, my father and I decided it was time to take plunge and take those on. So Ballantines, uh, before Dodish and Stewart, um, Ballantines was servicing all hair shop designs, wooden, wooden Primarily, designs. primarily hair shop, okay. wooden hair shops. And also the Dodishes and Stewarts, um, just for our customers. Mm -hmm. So it was, a, yeah, natural progression to, to take over a company that makes fiberglass versions of the boats you're already maintaining. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, excellent, excellent. And, um, what... What changed at that point? Has has Valentine's always been this whole operation, the machine shop and the and the uh, the transom room? Is that what <laughs> yeah. you call it? That was a really um, fantastic room. We uh, started as one building when it was just my dad, and mm -hmm. then he sort of had another person working with him, and that sort of got a bigger building, and then and then we needed a storage shed. We built a storage shed, and then we needed an office building, so we built an office building. So we have like five five buildings now, mm -hmm. um, two of which are large Morton buildings for storage, and um, one of them is insulated so that we can work throughout the winter. Um, my mother has told us no more buildings. <laughs> we are done. We are at capacity. Um, we have, do you have space for it? We do not have space no. for it. <laughs> so it's good. Um, we, we can't expand anymore. Um, and so we're tight. Mm -hmm. Really tight. Um, but it works. We're, we get it done. Yeah. 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 That's great. Um, okay. So, uh, tell me how, uh, how Edie and Duff factored into uh, Ballantyne's kind of evolution. Um, I, I, I've, I was interviewing, for, for my listeners, obviously they heard my interview with, um, with Fatty Geese last, last month, and uh, I kind of wanted to, to continue down the Edie and Duff trail um, because they've got quite the legend here. Um, just that they came to such an abrupt end, unfortunately. 
Um, so how did that factor into kind of the progression of Valentine's? Well, um, they're no, no longer functioning as a yeah. boatyard. Um, left these two boats needing a home and yeah. we had the ability to take them on. Mm -hmm. um, we also had the ability to hire two of their long-term employees, which have been wonderful additions to our yard here um, and help keep production sort of streamlined and we were able to continue building the boats. But also because we had maintained the boats for so long, we could also make improvements and refinements to both of the boats in the building process to make them to make them better yeah um, and so that that has been good I, uh, and just for the listeners there I, I took a couple photos of, of one of the finished uh, dough dishes in, in um, out in storage there and and the improvements that that are made on there just the small little practical improvements are, are pretty fantastic uh, a gorgeous little boat. I, I own a fiberglass boat myself. I I have a, an enormous appreciation for wooden boats. I love them. They're beautiful. I love looking at them. Me too. I don't really want to <laughs> own one nope. because I don't have the time. See, if I did have the time and the finances and everything, exactly. I'd love to. I'd, I'd love to have a fleet of wooden boats, but I just yep. don't. So I, I, I more leave that up to other people. Um, and... The, I've always seen the 12 and a half and I've always loved the 12 and a half but it's always been a comfort to me knowing that it's wood and I would never want a wooden boat because I don't have <laughs> so now coming here and seeing the dota it could and, happen and yeah it's uh, it's a little frightening to me I, I, I might have to uh, test drive one in the summer yep <laughs> you're safe for now we don't have any uh, we don't have our demo boat in the water okay good although yeah. we do still have the steward in the water steward's too big uh, it's beautiful it's beautiful, but it's, uh, I need something I can trailer. Okay. Um, <laughs> I believe me, I think it's so beautiful. It, it looks so fast, and I just wanted to go sit on the one that's, that's being built in there, but uh, I, I, I stick with the smaller boats. Um, they seem to get used more when they're smaller. For me, anyway. Yeah. For me. Um, so, uh, let's talk about... Um, I, I sense a little bit of a rivalry here. Let's talk about your husband's boat. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I'm looking out the window here. I can see uh, Amy's husband's boat. Um, they both have uh, really large boats. Um, but mine's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Amy informed me that she may uh, be selling hers. So, I am selling mine, yes. Um, his, his is just a little more practical. It's a little smaller. It's not single screw. Right. So, yes, he has a 1962 34-foot Havarist. So it's still classic, a different type of classic. Right. But, um, but yes, and it is a fun boat, but... I love my boat too, so it's it's sad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anybody interested in that boat can can certainly get in touch with me. I don't know if I'll reach one of those people, but um, all right. So those do you have any? Do you own any other boats? Um. Well, I have commandeered one of the dinghies. Okay. Which one? Um. One of the nutshells. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, my daughter calls it Minta's boat. Yeah. And that's just a tender for your for the big boat. Yep, but it's a great little boat too. Yeah, they're beautiful. The, the, the dinghies are beautiful, and, and I had the privilege of seeing one before it was all gripped, and uh, the construction is gorgeous. It could literally be varnished, and it would yep. be a, a perfect boat. Absolutely. Uh, which is pretty rare. You, usually, when you see people building boats for all grip, and it, it's not a cut on their their skills at all, but usually people will, if they know it's going to be all grip, they're not going to take that that meticulous perfection of putting the boat together right. because they know any little yeah, flaws are going to be covered. Use some filler here or there right. or whatever. Right. Not, but that not boat, uh, I got to see uh, one of the nutshells before it was... Uh, yep, yeah, no problem. Before it was uh, all gripped and it's the boat is just absolutely flawless. Um, so that's, that's pretty wild. That's a beautiful boat as well. 
Uh, let's see. I think that's about all I have for questions for you, except for my now uh, world famous lightning round. World famous. Nah, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so far from world famous. <laughs> um, if you could have, so here we are in the lightning round. They're, they're pretty much just one mm -hmm. quick answer. Well, no, some of them require a little thought. If you could have one boat, regardless of the cost, do you have a boat that you've always kind of dreamed of owning? I have a boat that I'd like to build. Okay. And then I have a boat that I would like to have and sail. Nice. So I would like to build um, a L. Francis Harrishoff design. Um, it's a restriction sail area cruiser. It's like a 55 foot, okay. but it hasn't ever been built. So I would like to see that built. Oh, that would be cool. Um, and I may want to keep it too. I don't know. What Probably I would actually because... What was it called again? It's a restriction restricted sail area cruiser okay i'll have to look that up yes it's in sensible cruising designs if you're familiar with that book that book um and it's never been built huh? no it hasn't been built which may which there may be a reason for that um but, <laughs> but as far as i can tell there's no good reason um and i think i would like an alden catch for something, my husband says something below 50, but I feel like if we're going to do it, let's do 60. Um, in the 60 foot range. And then when cool. my kids are, you know, like 10, middle school, I'll just take them out of middle school because right. that's a horrible time anyway. <laughs> um, I'd like to do some extensive year long, two year long cruising. Nice, nice. Where? Um, I, I want to circumnavigate, but my husband says that I say that only because I want to say circumnavigate, right. which may be true as well. Um, so I'd like to go anywhere and everywhere. Yeah. Wherever, you, wherever it takes yeah. you. Yeah. I'd like That'd to blast. do some in the Pacific. I'd like to do the Panama Canal. My husband ships, so, um, he's gotten to see a lot more of the oceans. And right. so he has a few things that are off his list. Um, but, um, like the Suez Canal, he doesn't want to do that, so we'll, <laughs> we'll avoid that. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's what I want. Somalia and Yemen. Yeah, probably. Probably a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> um, now, just to hop out of the lightning round here, how, you're obviously a sailor. How did you get into sailing? Is it just growing up in this area? Yeah. 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 yeah our, I learned on an original Harrishoff 12. Mm -hmm. Uh, loafer who will be coming back to us actually and um, and then sort of bigger boats we had a Nat Benjamin designed canvas back we sailed a lot on that and then um, and then we had a uh, Harrishoff Sydney Harrishoff Fisher's Island 30, 31 which is a, a 44 overall mm -hmm. cruiser that um, we never really cruised, unfortunately, but she was a... F and you've, you've grown up on some really nice boats. I know. I've been, I've been very spoiled. Wow. <laughs> very spoiled. Uh, um, most people learn on a, uh, and not to discount the beetle cat, but most people learn on a beat-up little beetle cat. Yeah, uh, which, you know, has its benefits. Yeah, oh yeah, I mean, believe me, I'm a cat boat person, I love the cat boats. Um, yep. Yep, but, uh, but, but yes, and then obviously I did the... The, the big schooner. Right. So I did a lot of big boats. I wish I had done um, like dinghy sailing, mm -hmm. just just for the experience of it. There's a you know, yep. you have to learn learn things much faster. Much more responsive. Yeah. Much more responsive. Yeah. Um, My but. first sailboat was a 22 foot um, Kells. Like I, I mentioned to you, it was the biggest piece of junk I've ever seen owned anything uh just an awful boat I mean, <laughs> even when it was perfect it was still a big giant tank that just didn't know what it was doing at the time um but i was going to umass at the time when i first got that boat and i went down to the sailing department and they gave me lessons on, on just little i think they were little hunters or something mm -hmm. and that was yeah that was the best like learning i could have possibly done i yeah. thrown out this guy who was a experienced racer and uh and he taught me the ins and outs of like dinghy sailing and yeah it's amazing because on a big boat you make changes and nothing happens for a 
a couple seconds. Right. Where then you make a change and it's instantaneous. Yep. Um, which sometimes can put you in the drink. <laughs> yes, which is my other issue. I don't like to go into drinks. So. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. Um, now, when you say you'd like to build uh, a boat, do you, have, you, have you built any boats yourself or, or are you more to commission this the building of a boat? Um, I would like to have them build yeah, a boat. Yeah, yeah. Because I can't, I can't hold a chisel to, <laughs> to what my guys can do. Right, right. I made a stool once. Nice. Um, and it was a really nice stool. <laughs> but, um, the best no. best stool ever. It was. <laughs> um, but I will leave the actual building to the people who... Right. Started at two okay. years old. and. <laughs> All right, back to the lightning round. Who's okay. your favorite designer? I mean, the, the, the answer there is obvious, but it might not be. It might not um, be. You, you were surrounded by hair shops here. So. Well, yes. I I think that L. Francis Hair Shop is my favorite. Okay. Um, Nathaniel Hair Shop, obviously, is better known and more prolific. Um but my one of my favorite boats is the Araminta, and that's actually what I named my daughter after. Oh, cool. Yes. And so I think it's, he, he builds things that are lovely. Mm -hmm. That one's not a terribly functional, easy boat, um, but most of his other stuff are both lovely and very, very functional. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. That's, that's... Uh... Unfortunately, I don't know the difference between Al, Al Francis and, uh, and He's Nathaniel. the son. No, I mean, I know who they are, but I, I couldn't look at a boat and, and see their style in a boat, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, so, uh, yeah, that's great. Um, sail or power? Sail, even though I own the power. It's back, back to that old practicality thing. Yeah. Right? Uh, if you're going cruising and you had the option, Solo or with a companion? With someone. Yeah. Uh, here's one that people always kind of look at me strange. Uh, a PFD, is it on or is it close by? It's close by. Nice. Unless you're out there alone, in which case it's on. Yep. Good. Good. That's uh, pretty much the same answer I have. Now that you have family, you have to be a little more responsible. Yeah, you do. You do. And, uh, which is really strange that we say that because we should be responsible anyway. I know. But yeah, in the same way, I'm like, well, I can't drive fast. I have kids. It's like, well, why are you driving fast before? <laughs> because other people have kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, okay, that's uh, that's really all I have. Um, so why don't uh, you can certainly give a little plug for, for Valentine's. Now, what... Um, What's on the market? What do you have? Uh, what uh, What do you guys offer? And I know you have some boats over there in storage that are built, and one is has was used for a month, which was kind of a sad story. But yeah, what's what's out there for Valentine? What uh, if, if people we, are listening? What do you have to offer? Yeah, we have a couple uh, great brokerage boats, um, both the Stewart and the Dodish, um, varying in in price and age and and so on. Um, we also have new ones of each of those. Um, and then I also have a very interesting custom Ted Hood Shoal Draft Cruiser that is pretty amazing oh, for the right person. Really cool boat. It's really cool. Really it's 45 cool. feet and yet only draws four feet. Um, wow. Yeah. That's my cat boat. I have a, a Marshall Sandling. Draws, I think, four feet with the board down. Yeah. Um, well, this, this draws 12 with the board down. Right, right. But just to, the fact that, that a 45-foot foot, foot boat could even have a comparable yep. draft to a, uh, a cat boat is unbelievable. Yep. That's unreal. But uh, beautiful boat. Absolutely beautiful boat. Yeah, and I have a great um, wooden power boat named Marjorie that, um, again, is the great boat for the right person. Mm -hmm. So we have them listed on our website. Yep. You can look them up. Or feel free to stop on by. Yep, we're here. Um, now, if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way? Should they just go to the website, or do you have a yep. with a phone number? Or um, go to the website and email. Yeah, it's the best best yep. way. That was I got in touch with you pretty quick, uh, emailing you. Yes. Whereas this poor person called me yesterday, and I haven't gotten back to him yet. <laughs> um, so yes, email is the best way. Okay. And uh, are you uh, 
Do you have any shows in the future, or are we just waiting until 2015 to start planning that stuff? Um, I don't know. We we sometimes do the Cape Cod Boat Builder Show, okay. and we like that because they have some nice boats to look at, and they're local, um, and they're at a time that's doable for us. Um, but oftentimes, because because we're a, such a service oriented yard the boat shows are when we need to be here you know working our overtime trying to get boats in or get boats out or get things ready for our customers mm -hmm. so boat shows are hard for us to do yeah i find that pretty that's pretty common it is people don't uh people don't like doing boat shows and they're, they're expensive every too. day is a boat show here so yes. you should just come by <laughs> it's I, I i that's a fact i mean there's uh there's such a variety. I haven't seen this many boats at a yard. Uh, I did uh, build um, Mr. Walmack over at uh, Beetle Cat, mm -hmm. and he has at, at least he's got probably more boats than you, but they're all Beetle Cats. But half of our boats are still in the water. Right, right. But well, his are all Beetle Cats. Right. This, this is like this variety of beautiful boats. I mean, you've got twelve and a halfs, and and I mean every hair shaft designs and power boats, and and even a classic uh, car. Is that, is, that a, is that a Ford Fairlane or something over there? That, no, that was a, uh, a, it's a Buick. A Buick, okay. Yep. <laughs> Stuck in the middle of all these gorgeous boats. So, yeah, yep. it is quite a boat show over here. So, um, but yeah, that's all I have. Uh, Amy, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for coming down. And uh, it's, been, it's been a great, uh, great interview, great tour, and I encourage my, my listeners to uh, certainly come by and see some of the boats down here. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, thanks so much. Yeah. All right. Welcome back. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that interview as much as I did. Uh, Amy was an absolute delight to talk to, and her knowledge of boats was uh, just amazing to me. It was it was fantastic to go through that that cold storage shed and hear the story of each boat. Uh, it was very impressive, and um, and just a delight to talk to. And what a great family business. I. My wife owns a business, and her family is all uh, all involved. And I, I truly know how difficult and how wonderful it can be to to run a family business. And and Ballantine Boat Shop over there is just doing uh, a fantastic job, and and really preserving the heritage of of boat building in uh, <laughs> in New England. If you see what I did there, heritage. Yeah. All right. Great. Uh, don't forget, sign up for my newsletter. Um, the more the merrier. Love to have a little community there. Uh, heritageboatworks.com forward slash email three, the number three. Sign on up and we'll see you there. Fair winds, y'all.